if we're going to have that conversation about whether or not they're contenders, the biggest question, the elephant in the room, is Julius. Yeah. It's Julius. It is. And it's not, it's not, sorry to cut you off, but nope. it's not because Julius Randle is a bad player. You could make the case in the first half of this season that he was the Batman in the Batman Robin analogy. And it was Jalen Brunson who was feeding off of him. Yeah. Usage percentage is north of 40% every night. Shots in the 20s and field goal attempts. And when we needed a bucket down the stretch, it was to Julius in the short post going to that weak side fadeaway, which he loves so much. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of our way of getting to the finish line. Then he goes down. We bring in OG Ananobi. We pivot our offense into space. Mitchell Robinson down on the block. Everyone else spacing out the floor with dead eyes in the corner. And Jalen, you now have this entire world to roam. And he ascends to a level of superstardom that is so high. It now has us questioning if Julius Randle can reintegrate himself into an offense without needing the ball in his hands as much as it was. Because can he be as efficient when he's just standing in the corner? Right. He's a bully ball type guy. Right. You know, it's give me the rock. I'm going to power dribble, gather and go up. And it's going to get clogged down there the same way it was clogged before we traded RJ Barrett. You know, everyone yeah. is going under their screens because you don't shoot a high enough three point percentage that requires me to give up some ground and some spacing to go over the top. And with Julius Randle, I, another guy that I love to death, but the ascension of Jalen Brunson is now having me ask, can we pair Randall and one of our God knows how many first round picks, what do we have seven up yeah. to nine potentially mm -hmm. in the next five years, you start taking some of those Randall is going to be seen as an asset. And if there is either a disgruntled star or another CAA guy that's headed to free agency a year from now, could you say here's Julius Randall locked up on a very reasonable deal. And that deal is only going to get more reasonable when the NBA salary cap explodes in 2026 with the new broadcast rights deal coming in. We're talking about contracts that might reach a hundred million dollars mm. a couple years down the road from now. And then you get Julius Randall for 30 something million dollars. Like that so. will be a steal and teams know it too. So yeah. where do you stand? Do you think there is a place for him if he's not, the on-ball alpha. Go Before the playoffs started, I said that, you know, this team could still go on a good run. But with the injury, just to Randall alone, I felt like we're going to categorize this playoff as the what-if playoff. Because you're going to be left wondering, what could they have been at full strength with these two all-stars? These two guys that draw double teams. These two guys that can create off the dribble and, and score and create for themselves and, and be guys that defenses have to respect. And so I'm still left with that. I'm like, damn, like if we have this full team together this year, they could have had enough to go to the finals. I think they could have beaten Boston with a healthy mm -hmm. Randall, with a healthy OG. But you are right in that. Is it an ideal fit with these two players? I, have, I don't think that they have truly maximized the potential with each other in terms of a two-man game, in terms of making each other better. I think that can improve. Um, you're right. I, I agree with you 100% in terms of does Julius space the floor well enough to allow Jalen to be that same guy because he's not a great three-point shooter and he's a guy who needs rhythm. He's a guy who needs the ball in his hands to get that rhythm and hold on to the ball. And sometimes when he does hold on to the ball, tricky things happen, turnovers happen, things of that nature. So, you know, I've been a guy who hasn't trusted Julius Randle in a big spot. In two playoff series, I haven't seen it. Now you have another one where he's not even available for you. As the Knicks continue having to pay OG, you have to think that they're going to pay Hartenstein. I wouldn't let him walk either. No, hell no. Jalen's yeah. going to get his contract in two years. I think he's going to get close to 50. Mm -hmm. And then you, you also have to decide about Julius. So this team is going to creep, be creeping closer to that apron. And by that time, you have to have a solid contender on your hands for me to justify the spend. So for the time being, would I keep me? Yes, I, I want to see what this looks like at full strength. But if they can get an upgrade, I've always said, if you can get a guy that's better than him, I would do it. I would do it. It, it pain, <clears throat> excuse me, it pains me to say that I agree with you because the last thing I want to do is pull at the threads of the fabric that have 
built the chemistry of this Knicks team, yeah. which means trading anyone for that mercenary that I just let off my sermon with. I don't want the mercenary on this team. Yeah. I want to keep the core as it is together. But because Julius was injured, unfortunate for him, he falls out of the rotation and this Knicks team comes together. And it looks like he's now expendable to our eye test. And it's yeah. hard to say that without being insulting, derogatory, yeah. or like dismissive of his accomplishments as a New York Knick because he was arguably like the first one here to get it all started. So I'm not going to forget that. But this is a business. It's a business. And if the Knicks are in the business of winning a championship, Julius Randle looks quite expendable as the one guy that you can trade that will bring back that piece next to Jalen Brunson to get you to the championship aspiration category, at least realistically. And you're not going to lose a whole lot because the Knicks just proved their championship contenders already without him. That's yeah. the piece that I'm, I'm at personally with Randall. And is there a world? Cause I know what the perfect trade is. What no, is, they would what never... is let's hear it. Let's hear it. No, what do you think? I mean, the, the perfect trade is obvious. The Brooklyn Nets will never do it. Mm. It's Mikael Bridges for Julius Randle and three unprotected first rounders and whatever salary cap is needed to satisfy the Brooklyn Nets. You assemble the infinity gauntlet of Villanova players. The final but, stone. The final but, stone. Yeah. Go get him. Yeah, you, it's the most obvious deal. But the problem is Mikael Bridges' contract is somehow as good as Jalen Brunson's. We have the best contract in the NBA in terms of team friendliness. Yeah. Because Jalen Brunson not only doesn't make what he's worth on the open market, it goes down. It keeps going down. Mikhail Bridges is locked up for a couple more years, if I'm not mistaken. He might have an option as well. Uh, and why on earth would Brooklyn ever trade him, even if he's not living up to the expectation yeah. and filling the void for Kevin Durant? You know, they had a disappointment pointing campaign but are they going to help the knicks win a championship in their city it's like the clippers would ever help the lakers absolutely not not no, a chance not a chance not a chance um mccall mccall being that final piece would be nice to have him man but there's, there's just no way him going to phoenix i mean him going to uh to the nets i i think that pretty much took the wind out of out of that whole thing like there's no chance so, I, I I just don't know, man. I, I think they have to run it back and just see. But the thing is, is that the question is, with the Bogdanovich contract, that's one contract that you can use to help in terms of trading pieces off. Once that's gone, now you're talking about more rostered salaried and rostered players and potentially breaking up more of that, sal more of that chemistry. Or potentially you might have to trade a heart. You might have to trade a DiVincenzo for, for the sake of getting better. And I think that's where things get dicey. I'm getting yelled at by the chat yeah. for my recommendation. And it's not just because of Mikel for Randall. And all the reasons that we just discussed from a basketball X's and O's standpoint, the reason is because of the relationship that clearly has value when you combine these Villanova guys, DiVincenzo, yeah. Hart, and even Brunson to an extent. They were just fine on their separate teams, and you put them all together, and there's very clearly something special there. And Brooklyn would know that. Mm -hmm. So they're, of course, going to charge a premium. So when I say three unprotected first round, you got to pay the price. Could, you got to pay. Yeah, the well, price. you're going to, okay, well, then trade some of those protected ones instead. Yeah. It's going to cost. It's going to cost you. It, you're going to have to make a deal that Brooklyn can say, like, they're going to point and yeah. laugh for overpaying. Yeah. Otherwise, they're just not helping you. So I'm yeah. trying to be realistic it's as a opposed to let's just swap Randall right, right. and Mikhail yeah. Bridges. It's not a 2K trade. It's a business of basketball. If, if you no. want to incentivize your crosstown rivals who you've, who you've been burying in terms of popularity, in terms of everything when it comes to basketball, this is a one-team town. Let's just keep it a bean. This is a one-team town, and it always has been. It always will be. So you're going to have to pay. You're going to have to pay a New York tax, a cross-town tax, you know, whatever it is, to even try to get the guy. That, that, that's just reality, man. So seeing, seeing the, the rumors from just the, the general newsmakers that yeah. Randall is going to be on the table, and that will be a name that pops up. Yeah. In free agency. I don't know if we see anything get done uh, during the draft with the Knicks, even unless they're taking combining their picks and maybe moving up. Yeah. Maybe they get their piece in the draft and say, let's just run it back, including Rand. Run it back. 
And then you go find, you, you move up into the teens, you move up to like 17 with your two picks. Because Lord knows you don't have a whole bunch of space in cap room. You're saving that for Hartstein, yeah. right? So you don't need two first round cap holds on on your on your team right now. Right. Um, that's I guess my thought process, but it, it'll be interesting. And the whole world's going to wait to see first what happens with LeBron. He has to sign, and then the dominoes start to fall after that in free yeah. agency. And then there's going to be Paul George as well, and Julius Randle. At some point, the name is going to come up here once. Once the smoke clears, so I would be stunned if anything happened during the draft just because I don't know if there's anything in there that requires such a, a massive move, you yeah. know, for a player that's uh, – I just – there's no there's no Wemby here, obviously. There's no Zion. Um, I, I see just a lot of mid-level type of jostling and moving around for teams that have an eye on a prospect and are trying to clear their salary cap or take on smaller rookie contracts long-term. I think that's the most that we're going to see, but who, who knows, man?